Welcome to this tutorial we are going to be doing today on the anatomical features that you will see as part of your skeletal muscle. Now skeletal muscle being your voluntary muscle and usually the type you first think of when someone discusses muscles. Now the first thing you'll see up on the screen here is I have a uh, lateral view of a person with their muscles and this zoomed in kind of strange looking structure here. Now this strange looking thing that I have drawn for the sake of this video, we're going to say that it's our biceps brachii. So it's part of our biceps brachii muscle. Now our skeletal muscles aren't just a giant blob of raw power, they are actually made of smaller parts acting together to create contraction. And we're going to talk about what all of those individual parts are that allow us to Flex our muscles now. The first part of the muscle we are going to look at is the tendon. But before we do that, if we remember back to our anatomy of bone tutorial, I'd said that in closing the bone we have a connective tissue sheet called a periosteum. And this connective tissue sheet is also going to be continuous with the tendon of our muscle. So we have the periosteum around the bone and we're also going to have our tendon. So the tendon being here. Tendons are strong bands of dense fibrous connective tissue that connects our muscle to the bone and they share a lot of similarities with our ligaments and fascia. And you can also think of the tendon as a strong anchor that's responsible for dealing with the force that your contracting muscles will be applying on your bones. And the next feature we're going to see that it extends out from our tendon is the epimesium or epimesium. Epimesium itself means outside muscle. So you can remember it in that way as the outermost layer of connective tissue surrounding the body of the muscle itself. Now it's made of dense irregular connective tissue and it's also continuous with our tendon and even sometimes blends uh, in with the fascia that's going to be separating your neighboring muscles. So we have that epimesium in the blue here. Now I've just said that that epimesium surrounds the uh, whole muscle itself, but the uh, proper name for that whole muscle is the belly. You'll sometimes hear it called uh, the body as well. And that's just referring to the uh, entire collection of all of those uh, muscle fibers and fascicles that we'll discuss in a moment. So the belly, in green here being the entire body of the muscle. And I'll just show that up here as well. If we were to look at the whole muscle there, we'd be seeing the belly of that muscle or the body of that muscle. And the next feature we're going to see within the body of the muscle is the paramecium. The paramecium once again is going to be a connective tissue sheath that's going to be enclosing the fascicles. So we can see so far that it's a common feature of our body to surround and protect our organs and muscles with connective tissue. So we have the periosteum around the bone. We have the epimesium that's going to be extending from our tendon, which will enclose the whole muscle itself. And then we have the paramecium, which is going to be surrounding these bundles of muscle fibers known as fascicles. And the fascicles, as I just said, are bundles of the muscle fibers themselves. And when I say muscle fibers, I mean muscle cells. So don't get confused there. We sometimes call the muscle cells fibers. So that fascicle is just going to be a collection or a bundle of those fibers that's enclosed in the paramecium. And now that we've made it all the way down to the individual cells, once again we're going to have one more layer of connective tissue. And that layer is called our endomecium. Endomecium meaning within muscle. So remember that epimecium meant on the outside of muscle, endomecium meaning within the muscle, and the paramecium between those two. 
and the endomesium is a more delicate connective tissue or wispy and it's going to surround those individual cells. And now that we've made it down to the cell here or down to the fiber, let's focus on its features or the features that we can see on this picture here. So the fiber itself is the cell and I'm just outlining it here. So this here is one entire muscle cell. But with our skeletal muscle, it goes even smaller than that into something we have called a myofibril. And we'll talk about the myofibrils and uh, their features in a whole video itself. So the muscle cell is elongated, so it can be quite long. And it's multinuclear, meaning it can have many nucleuses, as I've just uh, drawn up here. And if we have a think for a moment about why we are going to need more than one nucleus for these muscle cells, the main reason would be, like I just said, they are elongated, with some cells extending the full length of the muscle, which could be over 30 centimeters. So if one nucleus was trying to send a chemical messages to a part of the cell 30 centimeters away, it's going to struggle big time. And that's why we have more than one nucleus or a multinucleate muscle cell. And just to finish up this video, the last feature I'll discuss really quickly are the myofibrils. I'm just outlining the myofibrils here and we'll do a whole video on them next. The myofibrils being the individual contractile units of the muscle itself. Now they're going to be made up of uh, structures called sarcomeres. And the sarcomeres we'll talk about in the future as well as they're the uh, points on the muscle that are going to create that contraction. So down to the point of our myofibrils. That's going to be all of the features that make up the uh, anatomy of our skeletal muscle. I hope this video has been helpful to you. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you again soon.